What's going on everybody? Curtis Wilkerson with hogsports.com coming to you from Bud Walton Arena where the Razorbacks just wrapped up a 69 to 57 win over Ole Miss. Four game losing streak is snapped. The vibes, at least for today, are restored. Man, oh man, did Arkansas need that one. Listen, you can't start a streak without getting the first one. Arkansas took care of business today. You know, this was a battle <laughs> for the SEC basement. It's crazy to think about that, but with all due respect to Ole Miss, I think that's a team that kind of belongs at the bottom of the league standings this year. Arkansas doesn't fit that category. They've been struggling, but they're better than what we've seen, and I think they proved that today. No, beating Ole Miss by a dozen isn't going to move the needle nationally. It doesn't mean all the problems uh, that have you know kind of risen up over the course of the last two weeks just suddenly don't exist, but it's progress, right? And man, it felt good. They needed that. They needed to get a little bit of mojo back. And I think they did in this game. You know, it, it, it's interesting. You know, Arkansas stopped the bleeding. It was kind of an ugly back and forth first half. Uh, you know, Arkansas, they, they, they limited the turnovers really in the first half, but they had some live ball ones that were killers that were leading to dunks on the other end. Uh, eventually, though, I felt like it was Joseph Pinion that really gave the Razorbacks a huge spark late in the first half. He had eight points in, in about three or four minutes there down the stretch before the break. He hit a couple threes. All of a sudden, Arkansas goes into halftime. Uh, they're only up by three. It was 32 to 29, but you felt like they had a jolt of momentum. It was an early 11 a.m. tip. Uh, I feel like that kind of got the crowd going. They were energized, and, and I thought they were awesome throughout the majority of the rest of the game. Uh, but in the second half, Arkansas really got things under control pretty quickly. They pushed the lead out to double digits, uh, got up by as many as 21 points uh, in that game, which, hey, you, uh, that's good. Arkansas hasn't been up by that much in a long time, but still uh, they, they've kind of coughed up some double digit leads here lately. So you're a little worried, uh, you know, when, when Ole Miss goes on an 11 to one run there, you know, kind of in the final few minutes, they cut it to 11, must call the timeout and said, uh-uh, it, it ain't happening this time. And so they, they clear things out, uh, go to that stall ball stuff that, hey, it drives some people nuts from time to time. I think Arkansas absolutely need to do that in this game. Uh, put the ball in Devo Davis's hands. And Ole Miss never got closer than 10 the rest of the way. It was a comfortable victory for the Razorbacks. You know, taking a look at it here, uh, listen, there was some progress in some areas that have been problematic for Arkansas in recent weeks. Like, I mean, you don't lose four games in a row without having some issues, right? There were some common themes there. Uh, I think Arkansas took a step forward in some areas in this game. They cut the turnovers nearly in half. They had 21 at Missouri the other night. Uh, listen, Missouri's, I think they're second in the country or something in steals. They turn teams over a lot. It was on the road, uh, it happens. But listen, all you can do is respond. That's over and done with. All Arkansas could do is respond and improve. They worked on it a lot in practice. They come out, they only turn it over 11 times in this game, and that was single digits really until the end. They did a nice job of taking care of the basketball, limiting the live ball turnovers, especially after a few early ones that, that proved costly. I thought they were a lot better in that regard the rest of the game. Uh, listen, hey, knock on wood or whatever you gotta do, we don't wanna jinx anything here, but Arkansas hit eight more threes in this game, they were eight of 20. So now we have three consecutive games where this Razorback team has made at least seven three-pointers and they're shooting 40% from beyond the arc in those games. Uh, listen, I'm not saying they're the Golden State Warriors here, but if you're taking good, high quality shots, so if your shot selection is there and you're not forcing a bunch of them, which Arkansas hasn't been these last few games, and you're stepping up and shooting them with confidence and you have the right guys taking them, there's no reason why this team has to be woeful from beyond the earth. They have guys that can make shots and we're seeing some people step up. And at some point here, again, knock on wood, the hope is that you return Nick Smith Jr. And that's gonna add even more firepower. So that's good. It, you know, if it becomes a pattern like this, teams are gonna have to stop defending Arkansas the way they have, which is gonna open things up around the rim with those driving lanes where they really, really excel. Good sign, three games in a row, they were eight of 20 from three in this game kind of got back to the identity defensively, right? 17 turnovers forced by the Razorbacks that came on 12 steals. Uh, listen, that's kind of back where it was in the non-conference portion of the schedule, right? Uh, Arkansas needs to be able to do that. They got to fuel some things offensively, speed the game up by generating those turnovers. They did that in this game, but here's the thing about it. Arkansas was able to be aggressive and disruptive on the defensive end of the floor without 
putting the opponent on the free throw line 40 times, right? Because that's what we've seen the last three games. They, we, we talk about the officiating all we want, uh, appreciate the apology after the fact for, for the blown charge call at Missouri. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, opponents are averaging 37 free throw attempts per game against Arkansas in the last three. It's like Jordan Walsh said afterwards, you're just not gonna beat teams when you're giving them all those free opportunities to get points on you because Arkansas is hard to score on in the half court but the free throw line, they call, it, they call it the charity stripe for a reason, right? Arkansas was great in this game of defending without fouling. Eric Musselman talked about how, hey, we haven't really changed anything here schematically yet. We had the towels above our heads uh, defending to kind of discourage guys from reaching. They were doing that at practice. Maybe it carried over some, whatever. Uh, but they found a good balance there of being aggressive versus not fouling. Only 16 fouls in this game. Ole Miss only shot 13 free throws. So you have that, and then you see Arkansas start to generate a bunch of stops. You look up at the end of the night, they've only given up 57 points, okay? That's where it's at, okay? So progress there. Very good job. Uh, you know, Arkansas does need to make some free throws. Man, we thought maybe they were kind of turning the corner at that Missouri game. You go on the road and you hit 23 or 26, uh, that's pretty good. I mean, it's almost 90%. Uh, and they come out in this game, and what were they, 9 of 17 in the game? Eh. Need to be a little bit better there. Some of it is about who's shooting the free throws, but uh, listen, Arkansas is a team that's going to continue to get to the line. They got to cash in better than that. Um, I think they're just under 70% on the season now. That's got to be up closer to 75. Defensively, uh, you know, Arkansas always has uh, kind of an emphasis on shutting down the opponent's star player. Well, that guy was very clear and obvious at the top of the scouting report. Uh, for Ole Miss, it was Matthew Morell, their junior guard. This guy was who was averaging 15.6 points per game. He was the only double-digit scorer uh, for Ole Miss on the season. He had taken over 100 shots more than the next guy on the team. He lets it fly, lets it rip. Arkansas limited him to three points and turned him over four times in 24 minutes in this game. Terrific job by Devo Davis. His, his defensive effort has been incredible, even in the losing streak. He, I mean, he gets the toughest assignments, and he continues to do a really good job on that end of the floor for Arkansas, uh, Murrell did get hurt there uh, near the end of the game. Hope he's okay. You don't like to see injuries with anybody. Whew. I mean, there's some great performances in this one. Uh, Ricky Council not included in that. You know, Arkansas's leading scorer, he really struggled in this game, and, and he didn't play that much because of it. Uh, he was kind of the culprit on some of those live ball turnovers. He didn't score in the first half. He got a bucket to open the second half. Uh, but, man, it's just one of those games where it just wasn't his night. You think about a team that has struggled at times offensively and you wonder, okay, if, if Ricky doesn't have this night, where are the points going to come from? And I thought they had four guys who really stepped up for him. Uh, Anthony Black, I thought he was terrific. I really did. Uh, 17 points in this game. You know, he was doing a variety of things. Wasn't knocking down a bunch of perimeter jumpers, uh, but he was aggressive on the attack. 7 to 17 from the field, so you'd like him to be a little bit more efficient there. Uh, but he was attacking the rim. He was getting out and running the floor in transition, which is something he's really good at. They were posting him up uh, from time to time and letting him go to work on smaller guards. I thought he had a nice game there. Uh, eight assists in this game. That's the number. You know, I kind of thought we'd have a lot of those games with AB, getting you know, high assist games. He had eight in this game. Turnovers have been killing him in the past few. I think he was averaging four per game over the last four or something like that. He had zero turnovers for a majority of the game. He wound up with two. He had two in the last couple minutes. But for, you know, when that game... Uh, when we were in the meat of the minutes there, he was flawless in terms of taking care of the basketball. So a great step forward there. Five steals. Five steals for A.B. That's a hell of a line. 17 points, eight assists, five steals. Very good. Uh, Jordan Walsh, the biggest stat for him, there's two of them. He played 40 minutes. Why? Because he only had one foul. <laughs> you know, we, we talked about it uh, on the show earlier in the week. You know, he had 22 personal fouls and only 20 made field goals and free throws combined in SEC play. Uh, Arkansas needs him. It looked like he was, you know, kind of on the verge of a breakout against Missouri. Uh, he was plus 13 in 13 minutes of action because he had five fouls in, in that limited amount of time. Uh, so I know he put a heavy emphasis on it. He said the coaching staff gives him, you know, they, they pick on him about it, like what's your over under on, on fouls in this game, man. Uh, but he did a nice job of adjusting stayed on the floor, and he made a huge impact for Arkansas. He had 13 points and seven rebounds. Uh, he knocked down a couple threes. The three ball starting to look real smooth coming out of his hands. He struggled so much early in SEC play. He knocked down a couple at Missouri, 
knock down a couple in this game. He's another guy. If he starts spacing the floor, it opens things up for everybody, including him. He had a really nice baseline drive and dunk. Uh, you know, he's working in that zone, kind of in that dunker spot, short corner area, had a couple tough spin move finishes. He looked the part in this game. And then Devo, I mean, he was awesome. I've been so impressed with Devo. I think he's been Arkansas's best player in SEC play. Uh, what can you say? You know, 16 points, five rebounds, four assists. We talked about his lockdown defensive effort, and then he knocked down three more three-pointers. And he looks confident doing it. He's not forcing it. He's not kicking the legs, which he has a habit of doing. Sometimes he turns his body, uh, but that, you know, his, his release has been fluid. It's been consistent. You can tell that he's shooting that thing with confidence right now. So think about that for a second. You get, you get three three-pointers out of Devo. You get two out of Jordan Walsh. And then Joseph Pinion comes in and gives you three triples uh, off the bench. I mentioned that spurt from him at the end of the first half. I thought that was really key for the Razorbacks. He had another one where he, he hit a corner three and he had a tough finish inside. Uh, kind of a little five-point spurt there in the second half. Yeah, listen, JP had 13 points off the bench, and he had five rebounds, four of them defensive. Eric Musselman said that was a big deal, and they found some matchups that they liked for him on the defensive end, and he was effective there. And, and like Mush said, it's going to be matchup dependent with Joe as we move forward here over the course of the rest of the regular season. But they had some matchups. There were some guys out there they thought he could have success defending, and he went out there and he did it, and he played with confidence. He made an impact. Arkansas has won two SEC games this season. In both of those games, he scored 13 points coming off the bench. You love to see it. Man, the center spot was interesting. Arkansas started Kamani Johnson, then we played a few minutes. They went to Makai. Uh, he was a little rough early on. They settled on Mikel Mitchell. Uh, didn't do a bunch in terms of scoring, but I thought he was a real presence on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, he wound up starting the second half. He played 21 minutes, uh, was good on the boards. I, I thought he did a, a pretty good job for the Razorbacks there, but he came out with about 10 minutes left in the game. Um, as it turns out, he's going to have to get x-rays and, and get that right foot evaluated. So something to keep an eye on there with Mikel because I thought he was a guy who was kind of starting to emerge uh, there for the Hogs. Hope he's okay. So, so looking forward to, to hopefully getting some good news there. Whew, man. Exhale a little bit, right? I mean, listen, there, there's work to be done, but this was a good start for the Razorbacks. This was a must-win game. I don't care if it's January. Arkansas backed itself into a corner to the point where they can't afford to take any more losses at home. They just can't. And they're going to have to pick some off you know, on the road as well. Uh, but this was a great start. Get a little bit of momentum. Get a little bit of confidence. Like I said, get your mojo back a little bit. They did that in this game. And what you saw was progress in the process. Trust the plan. These guys are going to be okay. They might be getting an addition back into the lineup here in the somewhat near future. We'll see. Okay, what that's going to look like with Nick. But this team is capable of playing really good basketball and, and really accomplishing a lot of the goals that they had set out for themselves. But the margin of error is slim now. Okay, so you took care of business now. Like I said, you can't start a streak until you get the first one, but you can start to make it a streak on Tuesday night. A grudge match opportunity against LSU. That's one Arkansas wishes they could have back. That was the SEC opener. They lost 60 to 57 in Baton Rouge. Didn't play well in that game. The beauty of some of these conference opponents are you get to play a lot of them twice. Okay, so they get an opportunity to kind of right that wrong on Tuesday night and, and set up a showdown in the SEC Big 12 Challenge at Baylor. It's a lot more fun standing up here talking about this after a victory. I, I enjoyed it. Okay, I hope you guys had a good time with it also. Uh, appreciate you checking out the show as always. We'll hop on here probably. Uh, I would guess on Wednesday, kind of wrap up what happens in this LSU game. Hopefully that's another Razorback win, right? And then preview the big weekend matchup against Baylor. Then Curtis Wilkerson with hogsports.com. Appreciate you. Enjoy your weekend. The Hogs take down Ole Miss 69-57. to